What's the best part of having a smart home? Is it being able to precisely control a number of lights with a single action by using Siri or pressing a button? Or do you love a good automation, like lights turning on as sunset approaches when opening a door or walking into a room? These are great benefits of a smart home, but today let's take a bit of a different spin and talk about controlling and monitoring your home away from home. Hi everyone, I'm The Brad Lloyd and this channel is all about smart home tech using Apple HomeKit. The ability to monitor and check your home remotely is a huge advantage of having a smart home. So let's talk about some of the things that you can do when you're away from home. Well, one of the simplest conveniences is being able to view all of your HomeKit accessories right from the Home app. Just like from home, you can see which accessories are turned on and you have full control to make any changes you wish. A great place to start is your home status along the top of the home app. For example, I can see how many lights I have on and by long pressing, I can quickly and easily see which ones and turn lights on or off, which is great for making it look like your home. As well, depending on the air quality sensors you have, you can see things like temperature, humidity and other air quality metrics right from within your home. Door and window sensors are excellent to use for automations, like turning on lights when a door is open, but they're also useful to ensure your home is secure. This goes for motion sensors as well. You can receive notifications when a window opens or when unintended motion is detected. And let's not forget about cameras. These can give you peace of mind when you're away to make sure that everything looks calm and in good order. And if you have a HomeKit doorbell with HomeKit Secure Video, then depending on your preferences, you can receive notifications when people, animals, cars, or motion in general is detected. And you can make this even more useful by creating activity zones within the settings. So this way you only receive notifications within a specific area and not, for example, every time a car goes by. And with iOS 15, we now get access to unlimited HomeKit secure video feeds with the two terabyte iCloud subscription. This has been a feature that people have been asking for since the beginning of HomeKit secure video. The two terabyte plan is $12.99 Canadian, but the 50 gigabyte 129 plan will give you access to one camera and the 200 gigabyte 399 plan will give you access to up to five cameras. You can also save some money by subscribing to the Apple One plan, which combines iCloud storage with other services like news, TV, fitness, music, and arcade. And with iOS 15, we also get package detection. So now in addition to people, animals, cars, and motion, you can now receive a notification when a package is delivered. If someone rings the doorbell, you'll be able to see who's at the door. Maybe it's a friend coming to check on the house or a family member coming to feed the animals. Not only can you talk to the person, but you can even unlock the doors and turn on some lights for them. Water leak sensors can be easy to overlook, but could potentially save you hundreds and even thousands of dollars in damages. If a leak is detected, you'll receive an alert right away so you can take action by calling a friend or neighbor so they can come over and turn off the water before any major damage is done. I've been working from home since the beginning of the pandemic, nearly 19 months now. Usually someone's home. But when I was working from the office, I would often check in to make sure the doors were locked. Now, in order to utilize HomeKit away from home, you do need to make sure that you have a home hub. So what is a home hub? Well, luckily a home hub is something that you probably actually already have. It can be an Apple TV, HD or higher. Basically any Apple TV that was sold with a Siri remote. A home hub can also be a HomePod, both the original OG or a HomePod mini. Bonus points for the HomePod mini since it includes a thread border router. That goes for the latest Apple TV 4K as well that was released earlier this year. Lastly, you can even use an iPad as a home hub. If you're designating an iPad as a home hub, then it needs to stay at home. So for that reason, it's typically not recommended, but nevertheless, it is an option. A home hub is basically a central device that allows your Apple devices to securely communicate with your HomeKit accessories, both at home and away from home. So when you ask Siri on your iPhone to set your favorite scene, it's communicating with your home hub to relay those instructions to your various accessories. Since all of your HomeKit accessories talk to your hub locally as opposed to in the cloud, you can rest easy knowing that your privacy is protected. When checking your home remotely, your iPhone is communicating with your home hub with end-to-end -end encryption. This is definitely an advantage of HomeKit over some other platforms. 
In HomeKit, you can view your home hubs under Home Settings, then by selecting Home Hubs and Bridges. If you have more than one hub, as you can see I do, one is selected as primary and the others are in standby mode. HomeKit automatically selects the primary hub based on its location and the connection to your devices. However, if you want to change this, well, you're sort of out of luck. You can try disconnecting various hubs until you get the one you're looking for, but there's no guarantee it'll stay that way. For the most part, it's not something that you should really worry about, but it is a common question that I've been asked, so I wanted to address that. If you're serious about HomeKit, then I definitely recommend that you have a Home Hub, and you won't regret it, because whether it's a HomePod Mini or an Apple TV, it's something I think you're really going to enjoy. I have videos on both of these products, so I'll link them in the description if you want to learn more. I recently traveled to an Ontario provincial park for a family camping trip, and it was so nice to be able to occasionally check on my home while I was away. Provincial parks can be iffy when it comes to cellular coverage. While I did get a signal, I definitely had to work for it. And that's okay with me, because disconnecting is kind of the point of camping, so the less we were all on our devices, the better. I check in once or twice a day if we had to drive into town. We did have some crazy weather while we were camping in a tent, including thunderstorms, lightning, hail, and even a small tornado not too far away that took down several trees and caused some building damage. We were careful and we spent a lot of time in our car. We even enjoyed checking in our cameras to see if the weather was crazy at home. Stick around because I'll tell you some of the cool things that I brought with me to help pass the time, including what impressed our kids. One feature I like to utilize when I'm away from home is the smart away scene from the Lutron app. The majority of my lights are on Lutron Caseta switches, and this is a feature specific to Lutron that will randomly turn on lights throughout your house to make it look like your home. You can customize the lights that you want to include and select a start and stop time. You can also have this activated automatically based on when your iPhone is away from home. Keep in mind, this is a handy feature when everyone is out of the house, but if others are staying home and you leave, this could be frustrating if lights start turning on and off. Other companies have similar features like Wemo's Away Mode and light schedules with randomness under Hue Labs. In my home, I have various automations that turn lights on and off at certain times. For instance, my outdoor lights turn on at sunset and then off at sunrise. That's fine, but I also have many of my indoor lights turn on gradually in 15 minute increments as sunset approaches. This worked great for me because it automatically gives me the light I need without it being startling by coming on at full brightness. I'll link a video I did up here if you want more details on how I set that up, including using a smart switch as a proxy so it doesn't override my other scenes. Normally, the lights on my main floor turn off automatically once I say goodnight to my HomePod, or long press in a car mini switch as we're ready to go upstairs to bed. But when I'm away from home, I utilize an automation that turns all of my lights off at 10 p.m. when nobody's home. Super easy to do, but an easy detail to miss. Best of all, I took some of my HomeKit accessories with me, like my HomePod Mini. Yes, that's right, I took my HomePod Mini camping. This was made possible because of the Mission battery base for the HomePod Mini. You may have seen some reviews on this product already. It's pretty amazing. I've been using it for a couple of months now, at home and away. Now let me be upfront, most of the smart functionality is missing when it's not connected to your Wi-Fi network, but it still works great as an AirPlay speaker. In a nutshell, the Mission battery base is a rechargeable battery for your HomePod Mini to make it portable and easy to take room to room. The Mission battery base comes in black and white and I brought both since I didn't have an electrical site and I needed all the power I could get. Mission advertises nine hours on a charge and of course this will depend on the volume that you're playing at, but felt pretty accurate to me. We played music constantly and between the two bases, we had power to spare by the end of our six day trip. I'll have a full review on the Mission battery base soon, so if you like my channel, then take a minute to subscribe so you don't miss this video once I load it up. Let me know in the comments if you've tried bringing any accessories with you when you've traveled away from home. Another thing I needed while I was camping was lights. Well, when you have kids, you get extra points for lights that change color. I brought E-Flare and the Philips Hue Go, and they were both a hit. How could you not love the look of this giant globe of beautiful ambient diffused home cake color light? It communicates using Bluetooth, is capable of 16 million colors, and it's IP65 water resistant. We use this at home all the time, living room, on the deck, bedroom, bathroom, and yes, camping. This provided us with some much needed light while sitting at the picnic table at night and playing some cards. This is really just such a fun light because it uses a battery, it's so easy to move wherever you want. 
The battery lasts around six hours on a charge. You can extend this by having the lights a little bit dimmer, and that's more than enough when you're at home, though I did have to use it sparingly to make sure that it lasted for my full trip. I will say E-Flare is quite large, which I love at home, but you should have seen how packed our vehicle was. When space is at a premium, it's a consideration. Admittedly, taking E-Flare camping may not be its primary purpose, but hey, why not? Next, let's talk about the Philips Hugo. It was really nice and the size was perfect. Like E-Flare, it's a light that can stay plugged in or easily move throughout the house when you want to add some temporary accent lighting. In terms of size, you can see that the Go is much smaller than E-Flare, making it easier than ever to take on the Go. Like many newer Hue products, it's capable of working with Bluetooth, though I recommend using it with the Hue Bridge that communicates with Zigbee if you're using it away from home. The Go lasts 2.5 to 18 hours on a single charge. That's basically the difference between full bright lights or the dim candle flicker setting. It's not outdoor rated like E-Flare, so take extra care to make sure to keep it dry. Away from bright city lights, I forgot just how dark it gets, so having these extra lights was definitely a great addition. Before you buy solely for traveling, consider that these are not really smart lights once you leave home, but the benefit of these is that they're multifunctional. Likewise, it's awesome that when we get home, they don't have to sit in our camping bins and storage until next year. We can continue to use them all year round. Quickly, one last product that I have to mention. This one isn't a home kit, but it helped us stay powered up during our trip. It's the Jigga 30,000 milliamp power bank. We just kept charging our phones and watches every day and the battery status on the power bank barely moved. I actually bought two of these before a trip, but one was more than enough. It's also got lots of great connection options. Jigga did not send this to me, I just had to mention it. $43 and great reviews, so it was definitely a lifesaver. I hope I've conveyed the importance and benefits of HomeKit away from home. It definitely gives you peace of mind. I feel like Home Alone would have been a much different movie if the McAllisters had had a HomeKit home. Let me know what you do when monitoring your home when you're not home. If you have any tips, then please leave a comment so we can all learn from each other. That's it for this week's video. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.